Perfect. Yeah. All right, super. It's seven o'clock, and uh, thank you all for being here. It's uh, such a beautiful day. What a what a relief, you know, for uh, a, a mid-August day to be so refreshing, mm -hmm. even almost cool in the shade. It was really gorgeous. So there's so much happening in the garden right now. Um, not only you can see the slow incremental change of the season, the gardeners have been doing a great job catching up with all the rambunctious spring growth, uh, but you've seen all the construction things we've had, maybe some of you going on out there. But then even like uh, uh, program-wise, uh, it's, uh, it's been extremely, extremely busy with all kinds of really great things going on, besides our typical things with Garden Explorers for Kids and Tuesday evening, the, the music series in the garden. Um, there are a few people here tonight um, I'd like to acknowledge, and they're here because of a Japan Foundation grant, which has been orchestrated through the North American Japanese Garden Association. So we have we have uh, Mr. Mr. Mishima in the back, who is a garden craftsman <laughs> from Japan, um, expert in bamboo. Yeah. And, uh, he is here. He is here uh, for two days. They're traveling all over the United States. They started in uh, Los Angeles, Anderson Gardens, then to New York, uh, the Morikami in Florida, and then over to Seattle. Um, and so they're they're bringing awareness and teaching about. Uh, the beauty of bamboo and the versatility of bamboo. Um, today we made these beautiful bamboo spears uh, with uh, under the guidance of uh, Mr. Mishima. And, um, and tomorrow we have gardeners coming in from all over the Midwest, from Japanese gardens at the Frederick Meyer uh, Sculpture Garden in Grand Rapids, which is another Hoichi, Hoichi Karisu garden. Uh, Chicago Botanic Garden has their curator and, and an assistant coming. Um, Let's see, we've got two people from Japan House coming um, who are involved in the, in the gardens down there. And um, you know, our connection with Jan Japan House is quite deep. And because of that, we have uh, uh, Professor Takahashi here today with our, our Kimiko Bunji is our, uh, is our connection. Um, and so uh, tomorrow, all these gardeners are coming from the Midwest, Rotary Garden, um, the Ulbricht Garden. Catherine, what have I, what have I missed? That, that pretty much is the whole, the whole bunch, plus our own staff, and we'll work with Mr. Vishima to build um, a, a fence uh, by the guest house. So one that's been long overdue, and so tomorrow we're gonna start it and hopefully we finish it. And then also, um, we, have, we have Mr. Masanaga here from Japan as well, and he is traveling with uh, Mr. Mishima, and uh, he is the uh, creator of Japanese Garden TV uh, on YouTube. So doing all kinds of things. They're both from Kyoto. And so um, 130,000 followers or subscribers to his YouTube channel, which is very significant, spreading the, uh, the beauty and the how-to of Japanese gardens really across the world uh, via YouTube. Um, so let's see, and then also, we also have uh, uh, Reiko Takahashi here, also uh, uh, um, the wife of uh, Mr. Takahashi, and she has been teaching Ikebana here now for a year? Almost. Almost a year, and so, but in that time, all kinds of people are coming from all over, including all the way from Green Bay, to uh, study with, uh, with uh, Reiko Sensei, and um, I can see it here in the garden, um, we see we Ikebana in the guest house, in the tea house, and things have elevated, and it's so great. Catherine is one of one of her students, and uh, Sachio and Keiko, and who else? Kali. Kali. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, it's just great to see all this the beautiful arts of Japan being elevated here at Japanese Gardens, getting incrementally better all the time. Um, so, and I will say the guest house is, if anyone has never seen the guest house, please sign up for a guest house tour. Um, we do that in, co in collaboration with the Laurent House, um, the Frank Lloyd Wright House down the street. The guest house is looking great, and especially with the, um, the EK Bond, it's pretty marvelous. So, um, we've never had a mathematician come here and lecture at Ab Anderson Japanese Gardens before. Um, but our connections, because of our connection with uh, Professor Kimiko Gunji from the University of Illinois, she's like, we need to have this, this guy come and lecture. 
Um, he's done so much to expand the learning potential for kids uh, in mathematics. Um, and so after a couple years of, uh, of trying to make it happen, uh, tonight's the night. So um, please welcome Professor Takahashi. Good evening. How are you today? Good. Thanks for coming. It's a beautiful day, summer, no school, relax, weekday, but you know, to come for, you know, to do some mathematics. That's great. Yes. Um, I wish everybody like this. But unfortunately, math is not so popular subject. And people casually say, I'm a not math person, right? And, but they never say, I'm not an English person. So uh, it's kind of the math is okay, not too good, but it's math is everywhere, like here in Japan, the mathematics is all over the place, right? And then I just want to, you know, to begin with you to do some thinking activities. Okay? So I have an origin paper, but you know I'm gonna give you this one, but not give right now. Okay. But don't worry, you have a paper and pen, but don't worry, I'm not gonna give you a quiz. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. This is a from Japanese textbook, elementary school textbook, okay? Grade six. I have this the origami paper, okay? I fold this like this into half, okay? Okay, so the left one, and then fold again. Second time. Okay, now it's like this, the top, right? The middle one. Now I'm gonna fold this again, this way. Okay. So I have a little triangle, and I am going to cut this way, this way, okay? And I'm gonna throw this away. And then open, which shape you're going to see? B. Okay? B, okay? How about A? C. C? How about D? <laughs> e? Eh? Okay, it's very simple, right? Okay, so it's, it's very simple. If you have this one in front of you, it's easy. You just cut it, right? Don't open it, so what? But if you do not have this in front of you, it's gonna be very challenging. Right? You need to use your mental image and then thinking. Mm -hmm. Mathematics is going to help you. Something not in front of you, but you can think about it. Right? So I'm going to cut this one. Okay, I'm going to throw this away, but I'm not going to open it. <laughs> <laughs> I give you origami so you can try. Exactly for a freeze, and then find out. Before maybe I can ask you. So who see A? No. How about B? Okay. Oh, it's kind of not good. C. Okay. D. Okay. How about E? How about F? We'll see. Okay. So I'm gonna give you one each. <laughs> Thank you. I'm already engaged. Okay. okay, so one each. One each. One each. One each. No, no, no. Exactly. Probably that's a good guess. If you say, okay, if you cut in different ways, different shape might come. Let's try it later. Okay. Thank you. 
You got it? Where you cut this important, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you have this. You have this. Yes. Okay. Well, having this shape itself is not so important, right? But the process is important, right? Why did we have this shape? How it come? How this happen? Which part do you cut? Okay, then next time, I'm gonna keep different place, okay? I'm gonna fold this same way. Same way, once, twice. Okay, so now we have this, this part is open, right? And then we cut here, right? I'm gonna cut in the same way in this way. What's gonna happen? Okay. So I well, think about this. Or if you cut one more hold one more time, what kind of shape you have? This way. Okay? So this is A. Right? So this is one, two, three times we cut this. I cut four pieces. There's something going on. Right? So, anyway, the reason why I ask you to do this is. The mathematics is more like a process, not the answer. But unfortunately, in this country in particular, the answer-getting culture is so dominated, mathematics. And this is very interesting result from international mathematics kind of comparison. <coughs> this trend in math and science study, 2003, a little bit old, but they have, you know, like all these countries participating. And then they send a same set of items to all these countries in grade four. They do the grade four and the grade eight. And if you are education so-called TIMS, some of you may heard about it. TIMS is once in four years, they do this uh, the, the comparison. So the, this is the result is the average percentage, percentage of teams mathematics topic taught in school and achievement. See, this is the grade four result. This is average score, uh, scale score for teams 2003. That means if you have higher, this is better. The horizontal side, this is very interesting because they send a set, same set of materials to all these countries. The country by country, the curriculum are different, right? So therefore, some countries, they when they you know receive these materials, oh, that we have a most of the things that we learn. But some countries, fewer topics they learn. So the, how it's related? International average, 73% of the topic that they're given, they already learned. But unfortunately, only 53% is correct. <laughs> that happens all the time. 
right? Even you teach <coughs> student not learn, not to be able to perform. Singapore, they teach 82%. They have like already learned 82% of the items on the test. And then they got the 74% correct. So that means if you teach more, you can learn better. Right? So far so good? Convincing? How about the United States? <laughs> United States, 82%. Same kind of, you know, the task student learn, but, you know, the 58%. So that's the difference. But my question is, where is in Japan? This. Wow. They run only 55%, or uh, 54% of the content they run. But they got the 69% average. What does it mean? They are not learned so much. But even they see a problem on the test, they can solve the problem. That's more focus on thinking, focus on process. So the fewer topic, but go deeper. That's a characteristic of Japanese mathematics teaching. This is grade four. Okay. So I think that, you know, the sometimes, um, very typically, we say like East versus West, right? The Eastern country, the student that perform very well, Western, it's okay, kind of. But even Singapore and Japan, huge difference. See, that's a kind of, you know, that I want to understand that the Japanese way of teaching mathematics, particularly elementary school, fewer topics can go deep so that they can think, they can use it. And I'm gonna share with, like, you know, this is problem from the Japanese textbook. And then the point here, if I give you scissors and then paper first, and then ask you to cut, and then open what kind of shape you see, it doesn't mean anything. Just do it, right? Do the work. That is the answer getting culture. If you give everything and asking them to do and then complete good job, is not. Teacher has to be very mean to your student. <laughs> because I'm not gonna give you all these things up front, but let you think, right? But typically in, in the US, the teacher has to be very kind for students. I did this, I did that. You know, okay, you just simply follow all these steps you can solve the problem without thinking. That's wrong. Because the mathematics, we want the student to think. That's the purpose. Okay, so let's see. This is another result from the Japan. Like, you know, Japan do this kind of uh, end of sixth grade. They do the national achievement test. The achievement test, the purpose of the test is to see how the national curriculum is implemented not like a giving a score to the school to compete. And then this is all public school. This is a large district, major district, other district, town, village, rural area. These are pretty much the same. So it doesn't matter where you go. The same, that's kind of average up. That is a public education in Japan. It's more like an equal opportunity. And also, this is like a, a is more like a basics, like a calculation or the knowledge test. And B is more like a thinking, like a problem solving, reasoning. That is like a score is not high, but the pretty much the same. And then this is the basic skill, like average correct response is like a 78%. That's the average, it's pretty high. And then also this is like, you know, uh, this average of the, uh, so that is not as high as basics, but they are pretty much same across this. So 
Uh, there are several different policies like uh, in education in Japan to make it equal. And that is uh, probably, I'm not gonna spend so much time on you know, talking about this kind of policy making here. But uh, basically, the Japan is elementary school education is give fewer topics, go deeper, and then give them opportunity to think. And then uh, kind of equal opportunity for across the country. That's probably we can summarize as a characteristics. And I want you to think about this one. And then one important question. Why do we have children study math? Mathematics is everything, like all this, it, it doesn't matter any country. I visited many, many countries visiting schools and then working with many school districts. But why do we teach mathematics? Because math teachers need to play. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> this game. <laughs> yeah. Yes. What? Uh, teaching <laughs> critical thinking. Okay, critical thinking. Okay. So let's see. And then I always ask this question. When was the last time you calculated a division with paper and pencil? You. When, when was the last time? Well, except the teacher who teach this calculation to the student. But for your everyday life. A month ago. <laughs> okay. Probably not much because we have calculator mm -hmm. on the computer. Mm -hmm. Even I have a calculator on the watch. Right? So calculation itself is not important for everyday usage. But we teach a lot of time spending. So why we teach this one? That question, the student might have the same question. A student might say, why I have to learn this? But we have some purpose. So why we teach it? I think that's something we need to think of. Probably what is the kind of thinking going on behind all these things? Okay, so let's see, I have a question. You see this, right? Okay, so the 2% milk, reduced fat milk, vitamin A and D, carry <coughs> less fat than the whole milk. You see every day. Okay, okay. How much the fat that the whole milk contain in percent? How can you calculate this? Well, I'm not gonna go this one deeper, but I use this one for my undergraduate, graduate, future teachers course. I've been teaching at the DePaul for 20 plus years, about like future teachers. And almost none of my students cannot calculate quickly. This is, believe or not, this is simple division problem. So the important thing is not the calculation itself. Which key on your calculator you're gonna push? You have to make a decision, which is much, much important than this. So that means you need to understand why, what is the division, what is the multiplication, how you do this. And then also number sets. Okay? Do you see this on the highway billboard? Okay? Fifth South Bank? Right? What do you mean by this? We put 166.7% into everything we do. <laughs> what does this mean? Well, we tend to, if there's a number in the advertisement, we tend to believe. Oh, this bank might be a good job, you know, probably nice, much better than 100%. <laughs> Have you ever think about it, where this coming from? Well, recently, that, you know, the TV and commercial is explaining for how you find 166.7% because <coughs> five star is five divided by three, 1.666, like 166, right? Okay? And then that means like a five third, you know, like a fifth third better. Okay, here's I come up with a 
위키페디아. third is not a fraction. Just like a fifth bank and third bank merge. So like a fifth third doesn't mean anything. <laughs> <laughs> right? But if it is a number, we tend to trust this one. That's a trick. Right? That if you know, it's not necessary to five divided by three by calculator. What that is meaning is more important. So we need to nurture future generation to understand. It's very simple mathematics, but you know, make sense of the numbers, make sense of the result. But in order to do so, you need to have basic knowledge. Okay? I hope that the bank is 166% better. <laughs> so the purpose of the value of study of mathematics in primary and secondary school this is quote from a book. The fact of mathematics is important variable as they are, but not the strongest justification for the study of subjects for all pupils. Okay? Facts and procedures is not that important. But you know, important, but not the, the most important. The most important is way of thinking. Guess what? When this book was written, 1908. <coughs> So this is the beginning of kind of modern public education study. And this is written by the professor of J.W.A. Young, the professor of University of Chicago, that the first generation of mathematics education researcher. He wrote this one. This book was used as a textbook of US normal schools, not only US, but used for Japanese normal schools, translation. So well, we teach mathematics not like um, facts and procedures. It's more like a thinking, OK? And this is from the book, OK? 10 pages of mathematics understood are better than 100 memorized and not understood. And one page actually worked out independently is better than 10 pages clearly but possibly understood. <laughs> right? You have to do yourself. But unfortunately, in the typical like a school mathematics is so-called I do, we do, you do. Have you ever heard this one? I do means the teacher demonstrating. And then we do means the teacher and the student work together to complete the task. And then eventually you means the student is do. So that means the teacher explain to the student. But we want the student done by doing mathematics. This is from 1908. Okay? So now during the 80s, there are a lot of study about this one. Think mathematically. This is you know, the colleague from Australia, and it's become a one of the best hit in, you know, book in the United States and it also the world. You can think mathematically. That's good news. What do you mean by you? You means everybody. Before 80s, unfortunately, many people think about it. Only talented people can think mathematically. Only talented people can solve the problem. But the research shows that you can think mathematically. But in order to do so, there are a lot of things. Well, the mathematical thinking can be improved by practice with reflection. That means you have to do not only doing, but you need to reflect. And then in the language class, there are a lot of reflection. But in the mathematics class, we do not see much reflection. So if you don't got the answer, asking teacher, Am I right? Teacher say, yes, you're good. You're a brilliant student. I'm done. No reflection. Okay? If you got the wrong answer, forget it. <laughs> and also, the mathematical thinking is provoked by contradiction, tension, and surprise. 
So we want students to experience contradiction, tension, and surprise in mathematics class. Unfortunately, we don't want to see any contradiction, tension, surprise in the mathematics problem. We want to avoid this one, right? Easy, smooth, and everybody happy, smiling. But they said, we need to do this one. And then in order to do so, the support atmosphere of questioning, challenging, and reflecting. Okay, so, origami again, but cutting origami paper. I want you to give another origami paper, and then I want you to come up, you know, again, I use a, a, a scissors, I want you to cut a origami paper in one line, one straight line, to make it half, exactly half. Piece of cake? Okay. I want you to come up, one, two, three, four, five different ways, five different lines to make it straight, you know, to make it half. I think you'll find it. I have a lot of origami like that. I have a thousand origami. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so could you pass? Five different ways to cut in half. One piece each? Yes, one, you know, five pieces each. I want you to cut five different ways. Or maybe three different ways. To make it short, three different. Ways. Three different ways. Exactly half in one straight line. Thank you. Thank you. How are you doing? Easy? Okay, well, do you have this? Yeah. 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 Do you have this? Yeah. yeah. Anyone have other way? Okay. What do you think? Ah. Ah. <laughs> okay. Well, this is not exactly not the same. Exactly. <laughs> How you make I'm not a robot. No, no, no. How you make exactly the same? It's convincing, right? 
or how, how you make it exactly the same. How do you make it exactly the same? Measure it. Huh? Measure it. You don't have many, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> from here to there. Mm -hmm. see? So this is one, this is two, this is one, this is two. Okay? okay. Thank you. Any other way to come? Okay? Okay? Well, how about this? I have this, right? I fold this one going through this the center. Mm. Yeah. If you go through the center, you have any lines. Infinity, right? This is one of the lines. Okay? So this one, if you cut this way, cut this way, cut this way. Cut this way, mm -hmm. but also I cut this way, right? If you go through the center, you have a much, much more. So it's not only three, but also four, five, six, ten, maybe hundred, right? Okay. This is a preparation for your tough problem. Okay, <laughs> it's not the problem yet. How about this? This is also this way, right? This way, this way, this way. And then how about this? Right? So if you go to the center, you can cut in different way. The real problem is how about this guy? Can you cut this shape by using a line, one straight line? And it's not necessary that both sides is the same size, uh, same shape, but as far as the same area, that's fine. You can cut in a square in different ways, rectangle in different ways. How about this? What do you think? So that means this way. So yeah. this is the center, right? Yeah. Any line goes through this center, that make it half. How about this one? This is hard to see, sorry. This center, any line goes through. So therefore, if you connect to this one, That line. <laughs> That's the thinking, right? The first two problems, like a task you did, right? But it's not, once you get slightly different, it's hard to use this just did idea into the new one. That's kind of mathematical thinking you need to use what a prior learning to the slightly different situation. And then that's so-called problem solving, you know, like ability for problem solving, which is different from exercise. See, this is not exercise. 
Exercise is more like a simply kind of mimicking the same procedure over and over again, which students hate it. <laughs> Why is they hate it? It's not interesting. Um, I've started working with uh, the, one of the Japanese, like uh, the video game, television game, computer game company CEO, and then it's very interesting. The game that the students are so much getting, right? The young kids, they are so much into it. It's not because easy. It's because challenging, right? And then the, they are carefully designed that the each stage become a little bit challenging, but not too easy, but relatively kind of, you know, it's not easy, but it's not too difficult, not too easy, right amount of, cha amount, amount, amount of challenging, yes. So therefore they do it. But when we teach mathematics to the student, we try to make it easy. Do you see? That's why they are not so interested. We need to give them challenge, like this. Thank you very much. But this is not only one line. Can you come to the next slide? Well, you can see this shape is a combination of two rectangles, right? If you look at the two rectangles, this line too, right? Top rectangle, the center, Bottom rectangle, center, mm -hmm. right? And then cross, another line. Can you see another? You could see this is a combination of square and then this is a missing piece. Entire rectangle and then missing piece. So if you cross this one. Again, this is the not the result. Result is so what? But the process is important. So we, you know, the Japanese must, this is also the problem with the Japanese textbook. And then actually this type of problem is in uh, the national, the sixth grade national achievement test on the, uh, the logical thinking section. And then they ask students, see, why these two regions become the same area? Explain why. That's kind of problem. Right? Okay. This is in the second grade textbook. They run, you know, they run uh, the multiplication in second grade. And the basic multiplication. After they run the multiplication facts up to nine, to nine times nine. And then they say, asking the student, how many to work? Of course, you can count one by one. But can you use multiplication? <coughs> How you multiply, use multiplication? Well, multiplication, you can count like equal groups, right? So you need to cut this way. And three times three, and three times five, and then R. Seems familiar with this? Same idea, right? Much, much, much simpler. But you know, if you do, cannot use it, you need to see, oh, that these are combination of square rectangle. This was like a rectangle and rectangle, two times six. Or you could say, oh, this chocolate is somebody ate it, right? Before somebody eat it, this is like a six times five, and then subtract. These are the same ideas. So uh, we expect students that this one, this is, you know, like grade four. We want the grade four students to think like this. Okay. So once you experience this, it's not so difficult. But somebody tell, explain this one to you kindly, step by step, you're not gonna remember. But doing by yourself, struggle, and then overcome is important. And recently, like, you know, in the US mathematics education research, uh, talking about productive struggle in the mathematics problem. It's kind of buzzword, productive struggle. 
And then the productive struggle means like if you struggle and then overcome, it's very important. Everybody talking about productive struggle. But many kind teachers do not want to see students struggling. Therefore, if that somebody is struggling, here's answer, here's some key. Well, why don't you do this? But if you too much help, it's not a struggle anymore. Okay, so let's see. And then even like a approach like this, like bit moving with this and here. This is a picture from textbook. The textbook is again not like a, a result, but you know, not the end product, more like a process. Okay, Japanese teachers say there are three level of teaching mathematics. Level one, teacher can tell students the important basic idea of mathematics such as fact, concept, procedure, and then practice. So basically, teacher tells students how to calculate. For example, let's see, uh, when you calculate like a two digit by two digit multiplication, Multiply by ones and ones, you know, like in the horizontal way, the ones and ones, ones and tens, tens and ones, tens and tens. Four multiplication and then add them all. Step by step, teacher. Right? And then let them start, you know, practice. Level two teacher. The teacher can explain the meaning and reason of the important basic concepts and practice of mathematics in order that the student understand. So the same example, like a two digit by two digit multiplication, level one teacher say you have to do this. But what happens if the student asks this question, for example? A teacher, when we add two digit plus two digit, how many times we do the addition? Ones and ones, tens and tens, twice, right? The multiplication, you have to multiply by four times. Why is that? If the student asks this question, Level one teacher say, oh, don't worry about it, just do it. That's the, that's the rule, you have to follow. Not necessarily understand it. Level two teacher can explain why you have to multiply four times. What the mathematical idea behind of this? That's level two. So the level two teacher have a special set of knowledge for teaching mathematics. Those people who just <coughs> use mathematics, they don't need this one. But level two need it, okay? But level one, level two is not a good idea. Level two, the teacher can provide the student with the opportunity to understand those basic mathematics content and develop mathematical practice. So the teacher provides the opportunity for students to come up with ideas. How you help students to come up is very important. And when I teach math method course for college kids, I said, if you are level one or level two teacher, we will not need you in the classroom anymore. Why? Lot of free video available, right? Khan Academy or all this. And sometimes I'm so sad, like, you know, if you go to the private, a public school, I see that the teacher asks the student to see the Khan Academy video. The classroom teacher walking around and they watch carefully. That, that's the teacher's job. Which is not a good idea. But level three, facilitate discussion, give some opportunities, the critical question. We have to have a teacher in the classroom. So that's the difference. You know, People, when you fix kind of, you know, refrigerator or whatever, you just go to the YouTube, right? And then they check, oh, that that's the way to solve it. If that the one time you got the knowledge to fix something, level one is enough. But mathematics, you want to learn how you think. That you cannot just like uh, watching a video explaining how you do this, not the how to video, right? So, one of the very interesting tasks, how they teach mathematics in the Japanese. This is also from Japanese textbook for grade three. Okay. The situation here, this ball is like a ring toss game, right? You know the ring toss game, right? Um, this is a ring toss ball here. 
one, two, three, four, five students with ding on their hand. Okay, line up like this. Actually, teacher ask a student to do this game in this situation. And asking student to come up to the front of the classroom, line up, and we can do the game. What's gonna happen? Probably if I were these kids, I'm gonna be very mad. Yeah. Right? Right? The kids may kind of, you know, it's not fair, right? I'm not gonna be this. The both side kids kind of, you know, complain. And then teach us the student, okay, how to make it this game fair. And kids start talking about it. How to make it fair? B-shape? B-shape? Or square? And eventually students say, make sure that everybody has the same distance from this ball. What kind of shape you make? It's a circle, right? This is the introduction of circle. So the definition of the circle is coming from student, complaining this game. Well, the student know the circle in everyday time before this one but they do not necessarily know the definition. So therefore, it's end up, oh, that circle. Kids can say that, right? That's a way to introduce, that's level three teaching. Teacher is very sneaky, <laughs> right? Not the teach, but it's like this. Okay. So these are the kind of textbook they use, which is probably very different from typical your image of text. Okay, so uh, I'm talking, talking, talking. I still have some interesting, okay, one more. Let's see, let me share with you this. This is a very tricky. Okay, so there is a shape, 10 inch, 5 inch, 10 inch, 5 inch. This is rectangle. And I'm gonna ask you the area of this rectangle. So 5 inch, 10 inch, total 50, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the, this length of this, uh, the four side doesn't change, but I'm gonna move a little bit. Okay, let's just, I move a little bit. What's gonna happen? Area. Same. 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 What's gonna happen? Area. Same. What's gonna happen, area? Same. What's happen? Area is the same. Okay. How about this? Area is still the same. How about this? How about this? Even the same still. Looks different though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Eventually. Zero. Okay, so when it starts changing. Okay. So let's see. I'm going to share with you, this is automatically calculated. Okay, let's see. Oops. So you see, uh, uh, uh. Let's see. Oops. Uh, yeah, see, 50, right? 
Once you start moving, it's change. Because angle is 90, not 90 degree anymore. So it's become parallel. So the parameter is doesn't change, mm -hmm. right? But the area is changing. And which is a very difficult concept. So like one of the misconceptions Japanese teachers sometimes use. So they're inviting a misconception. For example, you know, I, you know, say, you know, for example, a popcorn container, right? I made a popcorn container with this paper like this. Okay. I use the same paper to make a popcorn container for that. Which holds more? Tricky, tricky. Which <laughs> holds Yeah, well, most people think about the same, but it's a huge difference. So like a surface area and then the volume is independent. But this is a surface area same, right? Therefore it seems like area and the parameter too. And there's like a lot of misconception and this typically happens. But we need to help students to kind of over. That's like a productive circle. So, you know, we hesitate to give this opportunity for your student, but kind of the Japanese people call yusabri. Yusabri means shaking. Are you sure you understand? <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of lesson, you see. But anyway, uh, overall, the Japanese teachers are very mean to your student, and, but you know, that push them to think about it. That's a kind of typical. The national course of study is encourage teachers to become me, and so that the students can see. So thank you very much. I think we have time for a few questions. Okay. Yeah. Any question? I'm not that mean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, Americanized. So. <laughs> What? The Montessori school the, approach? It's, it's different. <laughs> Montessori is more like hands-on, like, you know, the activities for younger graders. But from my experience, typically once comes to upper graders, more like a durian kill. Yes. I am a Japanese, okay. and the way I learn is totally different. Okay. Yeah. Um, Okay. It's a, a very different way of learning. Okay. Yeah. Well, that, that started <coughs> during the uh, late 70s, 70s, 80s. The 80s, you know, like a, now it's more like a problem. So Japanese textbook is gra dramatically shifted mm -hmm. late 80s to 90s. And then as I showed in the graph in the, two, uh, the international study in the 2003, that time, most of the elementary school textbook become problem solving based. And the US, uh, the problem solving idea is emphasized in the 80s, but the big debate uh, during um, uh, the late 90, uh, the 90s, so-called mass war. And then some of the people say, you know, like uh, the, uh, the fuzzy mass or like a parrot mass you know, they did have a lot of debate. But the, the idea of teaching through problem solving is so important. But in the US, that debate, the debate is often happens like some of the critics looking at the classroom with not so good implementation. And there, it's always in the United States, the issue is that even like a good research, but once come to schools, there's a huge gap because the schools are not supported uh, very well. Um, you know, until recently, the school do, does not have an ongoing professional development. And once you got the, uh, once you got the, uh, the certificate, you are done, you teach by yourself. But now it's more like an emphasis on uh, ongoing professional development, but unfortunately, 
many professional development in this country still one fit for all. So like uh, somebody is coming from outside and just give a talk, there's a new idea, you have to do it yourself. So that's very difficult. Yes? Uh, how is it uh, like teacher evaluation? Mm -hmm. Like how good a job a teacher is doing? How is it different in Japan than in the United States? Like, uh, is there a difference? Like how, how you know a teacher is doing a good job? Okay, yeah, I say it's different. Well, you know, the, in the U.S., from my experience, um, I've been working with Wokingan School District, San Francisco, Oakland, Chicago Public School. Um, it depends, not, not depends, but it's more like a, a high stake, right? The high stake, uh, the test result, or Singapore is a really tough country as a teacher. Depends on the student score. The teacher's rank is determined. Everybody knew it. And then their salary is different. So huge, too much pressure, you know, for them. But uh, the United States is not that bad. <laughs> but um, some school districts more kind of, you know, the incentive driven, like more like a high stake. But Japan, basically, teacher's salary is kind of year by year, the experience not like a performance. Of course, they have a review, but it's not directly related to salary or you know, like a promotion. And the one important fact that uh, um, from my experience, uh, US school or teachers, it's more like a individual teacher teach their student. Uh, the Japanese school is more like a teacher as a team and then we teach our kids, rather than I teach my kids, which is different. And then uh, a few, you know, some, you know, we, I got a grant from the Gates Foundation uh, in the five years ago, and then the, the, we have a very strong result from this five-year project at the San Francisco School District. They are kind of almost like a bottom schools. It's every group within the group of the school, like African American, Latino, everybody exceeded the state standard. That school, the major difference is the teachers start thinking about our kids, not my kids. And then teacher work together, the teacher observe, class each other, can encourage each other. And then, you know, um, that's a huge difference. So, um, if that the school is like a shopping mall, the shopping mall is the same building. But each individual shop owner have a different agenda, different thing, <laughs> right? Even the same building. That is not a good idea of the school. School should be like we teach because, you know, even like one teacher work very hard to teach in the grade four, but in the grade five becomes the different teacher say, no, 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 don't do this. We gotta do this. That is really helpful. Not helpful for many students. Yes. So teacher training obviously makes a difference. Did San Francisco change the curriculum as well, or was it the way things were being taught? Well, you know, I support them to using some of the material that using Japan, mm -hmm. and it's more like a problem solving approach. And then the unfortunately, many teachers at the beginning they say, "Oh, the, our kids." do not speak English. Our kids is so low, they cannot do problem solving. But they did it, and then they're surprised. All oh, our lowest kids can do it. And, and that's changing. You know, after <coughs> two years, we start changing. We are doing the same thing in, in Wokigan right now. So I'm gonna spend the whole day in one of the schools in Wokigan tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.